and a really large tract of, of swamp that exists near the south, southeastern area of Louisiana, and we're south of New Orleans. Just with the feeling from, that you get from these cypress trees and the tupelo and the moss that's hanging down from them, it's just another sur surreal um, habitat and ecosystem to be in. My introduction was really during my undergrad. I didn't know any wildlife biologists as a kid, but my interest was certainly always animals initially, and I was on a vet track. And then I entered my undergrad and when I took my first ecology class and learned more about population ecology is when I got turned on to wildlife, wildlife biology, and immediately changed courses. And my first field jobs ended up being bird-related research projects. It's really just been one bird job after the next. Not on the right leg, not on the left not leg. Any All right. That's a new one. Because we're studying prothonotary warblers. And that's a species of bird that depends on wet forest really throughout the year. They are migratory. So when we encounter this species in North America and in Eastern North America, um, it is during the summer breeding season. And so we're in habitat that they depend on to reproduce. Barataria Preserve, a part of Jean Lafitte National Historical Park and Preserve, uh, really is one of my favorite study sites. It's the only national park that I work in, but the diversity of the visitors is just really intriguing. Um, a portion of my job is still the outreach component. So I am a bird biologist doing avian research in the state, but still connecting that to visitors to these parks is a really important our study objectives primarily have been to include citizen science and increasing nest productivity on our study sites. Since prothonotary warblers do use nest boxes and we've been able to set out man-made nest boxes at our study sites and then have members of the community help us monitor this uh, breeding productivity. And then the other primary portion to our research has been understanding the connectivity of the breeding population to wintering grounds. And we've been using tracking devices like geolocators and nanotags to do that. And the interpretive rangers are like a godsend to projects like this. So being in a national park where that is another resource that we have to help get our science out there is extremely valuable. So a work day for me is actually running the rounds of the park and checking every single nest box that is out here. And when I'm checking a nest box, um, I'm looking for how many eggs are laid or how many chicks are inside of the nest box. When the chicks are in an appropriate size, um, I will actually remove them from the box. I will take their weight, quickly put a band on them, and then put them back in the nest box. And then we monitor every nest box up until the point that it fledges. Or something happens prior to them actually successfully fledging, and we try to note what that is. Going forward, we're still looking at fine-tuning some of this migratory stopover, especially if there's staging of prothonotary warblers along our Gulf Coast, because our coast is so important to migratory birds throughout the Mississippi Flyway. So we're seeing if we can't get at answering some of those questions. So the mosquitoes for our habitat and our setting in South Louisiana can just be so ungodly. I did grow up in South Louisiana, so I'm used to really bad mosquitoes, but I've encountered moments that have actually pushed me where your hands, when you're banding birds, are just absolutely covered and you're still like maintaining composure.